before we can get into the meat of what object oriented programming or at least how to use it in in python we have to know what it is and and kind of understand the the really basics of of what uh, object oriented programming uh, really means and and has that so in in this video we're going to go over it, exactly that just what is the core concepts of object oriented programming there's not going to be a lot of uh, python examples in here in fact i don't think there's actually any at all um, because we're going to talk about just the actual concepts of what object oriented programming um, means um, now i do want to warn you Object-oriented programming is kind of um, a, a broad topic. There's a lot to cover. So I've distilled this down to just the very basics of, of what this is. Um, and that's what we're going to just cover in, in today's video. So I kind of already explained a little bit about the need for uh, object-oriented programming. Um, I kind of gave you this example of of this kind of you know massive um, situation where I've got a lot of Pokemon cards and I want to emulate them in Python and they're kind of getting a lot of code and really messy and it seems like I was just kind of repeating myself doing the same thing over and over again um, and and then it kind of became you know uh, like I didn't even take into account you know what if I wanted to do like a battle simulator right where I wanted a function that took two Pokemon cards and pitted them against each other and who would win um, in, in that type of situation. Well, you might notice that that some of the your code might actually start doing that. Um, as, as you've been writing more and more code throughout this this lessons, um, you might notice that sometimes it looks better. Some looks better and some doesn't. Some it's got almost just repeated same things over and over again. Um, and, and really, that, that should be um, something you're, you're kind of noting um, in yourself and, and thinking about how can I make this better? How can I do that? Um, and, and that's what the need for um, object-oriented programming is, is, is to give you the tools to make your code look, you know, not so much weird um, anymore. And, and I still, to my day, find myself thinking, you know, as I'm programming, you know, this is kind of weird. This is kind of odd. And, you know, how can I make this look better? And, and that's a good thing. That's what you want to do. It's called being, um, it's kind of a, a nomenclature in, in Python called being Pythonic, right? You know, kind of a really nice, neat and clean type of, of situation. And, and it's not just Python that you want to do this. And it's any type of, of uh, programming. I mean, I mean, when you're programming, it's really an art. And you want to make your art as, as beautiful as possible, right? Um, it, because the most important thing about it is, is not only are you going to be reading it, but the people that you're going to be um, presenting this to and and even maybe using your software is going to be reading your your code and you want to be able to make it so so that anybody that looks at your code can understand it and and object oriented programming can, can really help you with that um, the other thing too is, is when you start working with these really large code bases um, it, you can kind of start making things really hard to understand you know say you've got a million line uh, code base right you got to go through that man it becomes really really different way of doing that. Well, object-oriented programming allows you to take and distill this massive amount of code into just this one little kind of subsection. Um, and, and you kind of just focus on that section and everything that it does. And, and that's that's what you're kind of wanting to do. Um, object-oriented programming is also a, a different paradigm or, th or thinking. Um, and, and and that's kind of what what we're, we're trying to do, right? Um, and that's what it kind of solves. Um, so, and it is, it's, it's a paradigm, um, and, and specifically object-oriented programming is where you use objects uh, to represent specific elements within a program, right? So th these objects are going to contain um, data, it's going to contain, you know, kind of a collection of functions to work with that data, um, but it's all kind of bite-sized chunks that we've done. We've broken it up into that. Um, and object-oriented programming also allows us to hide complexity, right? So a great example is, is we don't need to know how a specific library works. We've imported a few libraries, like we've imported um, random, right, and, and used the randid function. Well, we don't need to know what the details of how random is working in the background and doing all that. We just call randint and it works that. Well, that allows us to do that too. We can abstract away a lot of the, the code um, from the user and only they need to know is what are we presenting to them, our little interface uh, to them in there. Um, it, it also makes our, our ability to test these chunks of code um, in, a, in an easier way as well. Um, and, and then also it allows us to focus on um, parts of the program that, and then not care about them, right? So we're able to 
break it up. And in fact, I would say as a design philosophy, you should really try to break up your code into the smallest components as possible uh, and then build on that and, and work your way out um, in, in that type of type of way. Um, Object oriented programming is actually not that new. Uh, and believe it or not, um, I was looking at this through Wikipedia and was really kind of surprised. It's got its origins all the way back into the 1950s and 1960s. Um, and, and there's a lot of kind of interesting things kind of going on there. I highly recommend check out the uh, Wikipedia article on this. Um, Simula, it was one of the first, not the first, but one of the first programming languages um, that that um, embraced these object-oriented uh, programming designs. Um, it was in the early 70s, um, and it was used for researchers for, for modeling uh, different types of, of things. Um, specifically, uh, one example they give was uh, shipping units between um, the, the shipping lanes between um, at different countries and, and those types of things. Um, and then today, it's, it's used all over the place. Um, there are languages that are actually built around object-oriented programming concepts, such as Python, um, Java, C++, C Sharp, um, and, and many, many others. Um, or if they've implemented certain aspects of, of object-oriented programming. Originally, they weren't necessarily object-oriented um, programming, um, kind of a paradigm, but um, they've kind of started to implement them afterwards. So PHP is an, an example. So is Perl. Um, MATLAB is, is, is another example of, of that situation. Um, now, I, I was able to find object-oriented programming is kind of broken up into four major concepts. Um, you've got encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, and polymorphism. Those are a lot of words that are kind of crazy. So let's break those up and what those mean. Encapsulation is the process of encapsulating Duh, right or organizing your code so that only the relevant parts are available to the user right so so you think about it um, what you wanted to do is you only want to um, you want to kind of encapsulate uh, as, as much as you can or, or put it together and organizing it right so if you got this massive chunk of code what are some ways that you can kind of put together things that are similar right so going back to our, our Pokemon um, example right uh, instead of doing a, a massive um, list of lists, right? That would have a each Pokemon is is in there, and, and then that Pokemon is in that you know kind of a bigger list or whatever. What are some ways that we can kind of encapsulate that out and, and make that um, a little bit more organized um, and and do that? Uh, and and that's kind of what we're trying to to shoot for here. Abstraction is the process of abstracting or templating the code, right? Um, and and that's kind of going back to that. Um, that dictionary kind of example, right? We're abstracting it out and we're able to kind of make that do that. And what if there was a way to kind of template a, a dictionary that always had a name, always had a level, always had a, a um, HP and a move set that we could, we could kind of call and we knew it was going to be there. That, that, that's abstracting it out. You're, you're, you're making kind of like a template of that code. Inheritance is, is the process of, of inheriting or, or reusing code um, with little to no changes in, in between. So, um, for example, you know, what if we had, um, uh, you, you, we kind of know that all Pokemon that are grass type have a weakness to fire, right? Um, and and so, what if we could create a way to inherit a have a Pokemon in general, and then inherit a, a fire uh, or a, a grass Pokemon that we know is going to be always weak to to fire? How how could we do that? Well, that, that's how you inherit, right? So you, you have a general Pokemon, and then you kind of inherit. A fire Pokemon or a grass Pokemon would inherit from Pokemon with all those types of things. It would just make some adjustments in there um, to make it so that it works for uh, that. It shows that with those uh, what's specific to like a grass Pokemon. And polymorphism is the concept that that um, that one thing specifically a class can be used to describe multiple similar things, even though the details might be different for each of them, right? And, and so uh, what we're trying to do is again, kind of going back to our, our dictionary example. One thing can explain if, we, if there was a way to have a dictionary, um, or, or what we're going to do is, is a class that describes a Pokemon, but each individual Pokemon is going to be different in there. So that, that's polymorphism, right? It's very similar things, but there's multiples of them that might be different, and, and they're in there. So uh, again, kind of going back to our, my Pokemon example here that I have here, and here's a Magikarp. Um, card the way I have right here, and, and we can see he's got a level eight. He's a level. He's got thirty HP. Um, he's he's kind of a really bad um, uh, Pokemon. Really, he's not much, uh, not too successful. He's very weak to to electricity. Um, and so, what, what can we 
get from this, right? So let's let's examine this. You know, what are the attributes that it has? Well, it's got HP, right? It's got 10. It's a water-based um, Pokemon. It's got a move called the Flail. Um, uh, it's got a weakness to electricity, right? Um, and and we can see that pretty much all Pokemon have those similar attributes, right? Um, and, and it's in there. And they've got similar actions. They've got moves that they can take, right? Um, and so what we do is we can think of Pokemon in general is like a class, right? So Pokemon are a class of monsters, right? And then we can break those down even further that a specific Pokemon is like an object, right? It's a one instance of that class that's in there, right? And that specific um, Pokemon's got specific values for the attributes and actions that all Pokemon have. All Pokemon have a move. All Pokemon have a HP. All Pokemon have a type. Um, but a specific Pokemon has specific values for that. And, and it may be different and even different between different types. You know, certain water Pokemon um, are weak to certain other, other different types of things where they've got different moves and different powers um, that's in there. Um, and and each, each Pokemon is going to be reacting differently uh, depending on, on those attributes. Um, and, and so some Pokemon aren't even related to each other via like evolution or, or breeding, right? So we've kind of really gotten off the kind of, uh, the deep end of really, uh, analyzing what, what Pokemon are and, and that, kind of how they, how they work there. Um, and, and kind of using that as an example. So think about it again, like Pokemon itself is like a class and an instance of that Pokemon or a specific Pokemon is an object, right? So class and then object. So an object is an instance of that class, okay? Think about that, and, and as we start going into the further details, you really kind of think about that. Um, so for for today's exercises, I, I know I usually do like a, a separate video for this, but I'm just gonna combine this into here because I'm not gonna go over this. I just want you to kind of do this at home. Uh, take a few minutes and, and kind of do this. Um, just find a couple of Pokemon cards. You can Google search for them. Um, there's there's lots of, of different things. Um, and, and just kind of write down what are the specific attributes that it has, right? And, and with those same cards, look at what are some of the actions um, that that does, right? So, so some examples might be, you know, what is the Pokemon name? What is its number? Um, what's the description, all those types of things. Um, and, and then for the actions, kind of think about you know, what is its abilities or, or what are its attack moves that it has on there. Um, so take a few minutes and, and go ahead and, and do that on your own. And then when you're ready, we're going to go and talk about um, understanding uh, objects, specifically um, to uh, Python and object-oriented programming.